my name is Hannah Stitfull. And I'm Billy Heaney. And we're both ambassadors for the Big Blue Ocean Cleanup Project. And over the course of these four short films, we'll be covering topics about seabirds, oceans and currents, marine pollution, as well as looking to the future. Today, we've come down to the Helford River mouth, not far from the Big Blue Ocean Cleanup's international headquarters. And today, it's all about the seabirds. So seabirds, well, they spend most of their time at sea and depend on the ocean for much of their food. They also have strong relationships with other sea creatures, such as tuna, dolphins, sharks, turtles, squids, and much smaller organisms that all sea life depends on, known as zooplankton. Now, despite spending the majority of their lives out at sea, all seabirds return to land to breed, all of which except the emperor penguin, who actually lay their eggs on the frozen sea ice of Antarctica. Now, some seabirds you see may seem familiar as many are found along the coastline of the UK, including the colourful puffin, seaside gulls of many different types, and Europe's largest seabird, the gannet, which performs nature's greatest high dive, diving at speeds of 62 miles per hour at heights of up to 30 metres just to catch its prey. Now, seabirds come in all shapes and sizes, from the wandering albatross, with its enormous three-metre wingspan, which we're going to demonstrate now, three metre wingspan to the tiny storm petrel, which is about the same size as a swallow. The albatross, like many seabirds, can fly for thousands of miles across the open ocean, taking advantage of the wind generated just above the waves, which enables them to rise high into the air, then glide down wind, which they repeat wave after wave, which ultimately allows them to travel vast distances without even flapping their wings. Now, out at sea, the albatross will actually only feed on the ocean surface because they can only dive to a few feet. Now, their diet is made up of squid, fish eggs and fish, and when the time is right and there's a little bit of romance in the air, the birds will return to land to breed and a breeding female albatross in the Pacific will lay a single egg which both parents will take in turn to incubate for two to three months. Now, in the first few weeks of the chick's life, it needs constant, constant attention and lots and lots of food, which keeps both parents busy as they soar across the southern oceans for thousands of miles, trying to find prey to feed their chicks with, which they then regurgitate into a type of fishy soup into the chick's throats. Now, this regurgitation of fishy soup is a trait shared by all seabirds. Now, it's made up from whatever they've been eating out at sea, which sadly isn't just always a gourmet seafood dinner. Sadly, one thing that virtually all seabirds have in common is the impact that plastic is having on them. It's predicted that by 2050, 99% of all seabird species will suffer from plastic ingestion, which is devastating when you think that effective waste management can massively reduce this issue. But all is not lost. Now it's over to you guys watching this video at home. You may be thinking, what can I do to help seabirds? And the answer is quite a lot, to be honest. Some of the simplest things we can all start doing is to try and stop using single-use plastics. And by that, we mean plastic cups, plastic straws, balloons, and even to start thinking about the types of packaging which our food comes in. So the next time you're throwing a party or you're having a big event at school, think about the impact you may be having by throwing away plastic items and try and use alternatives instead. And as much as balloons are a fun, you know, they're a good decoration, it's best not to have them as they may end up being eaten by a hungry seabird or a turtle. So why not take a wander down to your local beach or coastline and have a look out for some of these wonderful seabirds wherever you are in the world. And just remember to keep in mind how our everyday lives may be impacting theirs. Now that's it for the first instalment. Next time we're going to be talking to you about oceans and currents and the effect they play on marine plastics. For more information, visit the Big Blue Ocean Cleanup website at www.bigblueoceancleanup.org. And make sure you follow us on social media to stay up to date with all the great work that the Big Blue Ocean Cleanup Project are doing. See you next time. Bye.